Okay, in this video we're going to be building ourselves a, um, an electric outboard motor and uh, we're going to use a washing machine, modified washing machine motor to do this. What you're looking at here is the Fisher & Paykel Smart Drive motors. Um, they're a three phase motor um, and an excellent motor for this experiment um, or for this project being that uh, they're reasonably low RPM but because of the diameter of the uh, rotor which has the magnets in it um, produces a lot of torque so um, low RPM high torque is what you want for this project um, <clears throat> these motors can be used for anything really and um, you simply buy a um, three-phase speed controller um, which they use in hobby cars and that to run these motors and um, what they call a servo tester which is basically just a pot and that controls the speed of the motor we'll be looking at that later on down the track uh, okay so this is the earlier Fisher & Paykel smart drive motor um, been around for donkeys these have and are very reliable motors hardly ever pack up, it's normally something else that lets go on the washing machine I've never seen a burnt out motor yet um, like I said normally it's the electronics driving the motor that fails and not the motor itself as you can see um, this one's basically all plastic with the uh, steel stator core in there like I said they're three phase, you'll see I've pinched some of the wire off of this for other projects um, because here in Australia the, you pick these up off the side of the road out of um, on throw out day or just head over to your local um, white goods repair shop and there's normally a bin load of these which is where I've got this one from today so this is the earlier one and this one here is the later one you can see it's a little different I hope um, and the later one's actually more suitable uh, for our project than the earlier one both the same motor work on the same principle, both three phase. Um, but you'll see this one's a slightly bigger diameter, even though this is a very big diameter for a motor. Um, this one is even bigger again, and the wire is much thicker. Um, these ones came out in four different models, the 100 series, um, 60 series, 40 series, and uh, actually they had an 80 series as well, and that simply means that's the size of the uh, wire they use and the voltage the motor ran on. So the 100 series had one mil wire, uh, it was a low voltage motor and uh, so on down through the series till you got to the 40, 40 series which was 0.4 millimeter wire and a lot higher voltage. So um, this one here looks like an old 60 series 0.6 mil wire um, so that's around the middle. Um, this one here so it's got about 0.8 mil wire on it uh, which is better for us again because we're going to be running this on 12 volts so the earlier one uh, really was quite a simple setup now that I've got that stuck in the magnets <coughs> simply had your stator and your plastic drum full of magnets um, the shaft went in there onto the spline and you just Tighten the nut up like so, and uh, that's how that one worked. We won't be using that one simply because I don't have any of them ones left that I haven't rubbed the wire off. So we're going to be concentrating on this one here. Um, this one here looks almost new, so I would say, um, as I said before. The motor would have been quite fine in this machine. Would have been something else that packed it in. These motors are extremely robust. This one here has the steel rotor. Uh, all our magnets around there. That we're going to have to paint um, to protect it from the salt, air and water. Because it's going to be an outboard. Um, maybe the same with our stator. Uh, I may just spray it with varnish and um, see how that goes. But what we have to do here, unfortunately, let's grab this shaft back.
unfortunately that's all I have for this motor um, and our shaft from the early series has a different spline so um, we're going to have to start from scratch with this motor and if you're fortunate enough to get the whole machine that's buggered of course you're going to have the shaft um, and everything you need what we're going to have to do here is um, unbolt this plastic um, shaft carrier the spine is actually steel that is plastic it's probably got some sort of rubber shock mechanism in there I don't know never had one of these apart so three bolts that'll come off um, we're then going to machine up a plate and a shaft for um, so the shaft runs down through the bearings we then have to make a carrier plate here um, which will hold our bearings for that shaft to slip through. So that is our first job. Um, once we do that, we'll come back and have a look at how we've got to modify the wiring here to get it down to the 12 volts. So um, 12 or 24, I haven't decided yet, I'll do that on the way. Um, if we went to 24, we would probably have to split each phase in half only. Um, and that would probably give us enough power. But being 12 volts, um, if I decide to go that way, we may have to um, split each phase into four, parallel those splits, and uh, do that with each single phase. So um, we can lower the voltage, increase the current, and of course increase the torque with the motor. This motor will have a lot of torque anyway, um, being that the magnets are way out here. Um, a lot of leverage from the shaft which gives you your torque. It's much like a uh, large stroke on an uh, internal combustion engine. The larger the stroke, the more the torque. Lower the RPM of course which um, um, decreases your horsepower. So, But we want torque. We don't need horsepower. We don't plan on getting this thing up on the plane. It's basically going to be a trawling motor. So. Um, that is what we're going to have a go at here. Haven't done it before, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Once we've got this all coupled up together, um, the wiring modified, give it a test spin with our driver, see if it works all right on 12 volts. Um, it's then a matter of finding an old um, outboard that's got a blown or seized motor and um, then taking the power head off of that outboard and putting our motor on top something between anything between 1 and 9.9 .9 or 10 horsepower outboard engine will do just fine. We can cut and um, shape the blade and the propeller as we need it. So, um, But anyway the first job is going to be um, to machine up our shaft and uh, boss to bolt onto this flywheel and once we've done that we will then cut a plate and um, put our bearing carrier for the shaft on the plate and we have to get this all within a fairly tight tolerance because with that sitting on one side we have about two three mil clearance maybe there two mil I'd say so that's going to give us a mil clearance each side so um, the, bit, the shaft carrier is not a problem, that'll be all machined up on the lathe. This one here is going to be hand cut, measured and drilled. This is where we see all these years of doing this stuff pays off and we get it right. So I'll go ahead and do that, come back and we'll have a look, see how we went. Um, and then that'll be it for this video. The next one we'll um, hook up a controller to it, spin it up, see how it goes, see how much current it draws, see how much torque it's got. I do have a torque meter around here somewhere. I'll have to dig that up. Um, and then uh, the following video we'll be uh, finding ourselves a um, trunk and gearbox from an old outboard. I do have a new eBay outboard here that I've had for a couple of years, never been used, 5 horsepower. Um, if I can't find an old one, can't find an old one, that one will be getting sacrificed so it'll be uh, a new motor and a new leg and gearbox. And um, our speed controller, I'll have to order off eBay. 
no problem there, I think they're about six dollars so this is going to be a very cheap project we're going to keep it under oh, 100 bucks hopefully when you consider that a uh, thruster motor electric outboard or trawl electric trawling outboard that you buy a fee base 250 to 300 dollars we're hoping to do it a lot cheaper all right well i'll be back once um we've machined up our uh, drive shaft and uh, bearing carrier plate all right uh, went out and had a little look in the scrapyard and what i did find was um the rear end off of one of those El Cheapo 50cc Chinese quad bikes, a little two stroke one. Um, so we have a, a shaft that's threaded up here. Yeah, two nuts, key, keyways cut in the shaft there. That was for the disc brake to uh, bolt on. And it just so happens that this flange on the disc brake. Here's the right size to fit straight into the middle of the hub. So the chances of that happening aren't um, very good, but uh, there it is. So we now have a way of putting all this together. We can unbolt the sprocket, cut the shaft off there, and um, we also have our drive plate there that will be on the bottom of the motor. That'll bolt onto the uh, second drive plate we're going to make the same as that. Um, via rubber coupling and we should be good so uh, the good thing about this also um, really comes with a bearing carrier that the shaft fits straight into like so so um, all we have to do then is make up uh, we'll cut these plates off I'm not going to need all them plates just keep the uh, tube with the bearings in it um, and then make up a plate that's going to hold that in the middle like so. So um, that's the plan there. Let's put it together and see if we can make it happen. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Um, I'm always of the belief, why bolt when you can weld? So we weld the hub in, it's still on the key on the shaft so we can remove it whenever we want. Have our uh, bearing housing on the back. And that has turned out absolutely beautiful. So um, I'm just going to cut this. I'm going to leave probably an inch of shaft hanging out in case we wish to couple up to the shaft rather than this flange. So we'll cut that off there. Cut that off just above the thread there. We have our nut that holds it all on. We also have a locking nut here. Um, so, so far so good, that's turning out really, really well. Um, everything is keyed, bolted. Um, like I said, we have our bearing housing. All we've got to do now is cut out a plate that we can weld onto this and bolt onto our uh, stake here in these six points, um, which shouldn't be too hard. Basically just got to cut out a big circle and then um, mark our outside um, diameter for our centers and um, cut out um, this hole here not sure what size that is looks to be about two and a quarter something like that um, 48.23 only about 1.8, nearly 1 1.9 inches. So, um, but uh, oh, I'll zero that out. We're all metric over here. Well, now we've got fractions. Yeah, about 48 mil. So. Um, that's all we've got left to do, and then uh, this part is done. Um, we'll get our speed controller sorted, and um, I'll split these each phase in half and then parallel them, parallel each half together, and we'll start off with that, see how we go. But 
but uh, so far so good. Okay, basically we're all done here. Um, hub and bearing carrier is all made. Uh, shaft is in. And this one, this model here is actually um, cogless. There's no cogging. So um, this would make a very good wind generator. But uh, we're going to be using it for a motor. So all we have to do now is wait for our speed controller to turn up from eBay. Um, and build our trunk, mount our gearbox on. I did uh, manage to find a gearbox for it. Um, someone's donated a uh, outboard motor, which we're just going to be using the gearbox off. It's a little bigger than I want from a 15 horsepower. Um, a small one to five horsepower would have been good, but we'll use what we've got. So <clears throat> that's the next part of the project. Making the leg, coupling all this up to it, um, hooking the SB controller up, putting a battery on and see if it actually turns. But part one is complete. We are ready to go. As far as that's concerned, all we have to do is mount um, this section of course onto our trunk and um, the drive coupling. To uh, slide over the gearbox shaft, input shaft, and we're away, hopefully. Alright, uh, we'll see you in the next video when we start building our um, leg.